Welcome to My Brands, the show where I visit manufacturers of the gear I use every day at recording studios. My name is Irko, and today I'm in Lake Hiawatha, New Jersey, to see the headquarters for Empirical Labs. All right, here's Dave, owner and designer of Empirical Labs. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, are you kidding? It's our pleasure. Of course, of course. Thank you this for guy, coming down. This guy's a myth. I remember him for the very first AES show that I went to in New York when I came to this country. Are you serious? And he was there, yeah, like 10 years ago. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Where are we? Who's here? What's up? This is the, the entrance way and the front office where all the communication gets done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Judy, who anybody that has a repair or technical issue usually talks to her first and she refers to the appropriate person. This is our prized production person, uh, Mary Ann. Uh, if you, anybody owns a distressor, she built it. <laughs> Pretty much every single distressor That's for awesome. how many years now? Almost 20, right? Yeah, 20 years in July, right? Wow. 20 years. Wow. Judy and Dave. Look at this. Look at all of this goodness. Oh my God. Our distributor, Gil, uh, sells a lot overseas. Well, one of those orders was mine. Uh, you know, when I opened the second studio, I actually went and uh, but uh, the distressor, which you know anybody that's been in the studio with me knows that I like single units that do one thing, one knob kind of thing. So for me, the compressor was the 1176 yeah, for of course. many years, you know. And uh, when I got to see this, I was like, I don't know, a lot of buttons, a lot of everything. And then I tried it. Good night. <laughs> Good night. This is the most flexible compressor to date, and I guess, I, can we say that it's the most successful compressor of the last 20 years, the new ones? I, I don't mean? think you could say that and know for sure, but we are pretty sure it's the most popular high-end compressor. But we're uh, up to 28,000, which uh, for this kind of boutique high-end product is, of course. is a good amount. I love this thing, I love this thing. Well, thank you. Can you uh, tell us the story about how it, came to be? Yeah, um, and, and in fact it ties in with your love of the 1176. I had a bunch of new compressors and I had been in the studio many times as a musician and knew the 1176, the LA-2A. At that time, UA had not reinvented itself mm -hmm. um, and you couldn't really buy a new 1176, at least not as far as I knew. Really? Um, but I did get a couple old ones, and believe it or not, I got two really nice black faces for $800. When I got those, you know, uh, I immediately could do stuff with compression I couldn't do before. And so that changed my life. It really did. It, it was a, an awakening. But uh, my question was, why are these different than all my other hundred new compressors? So I, it, I took it upon myself. This is my mission to find out what goes on in here. Uh, I was working at Eventide at the time, so I, I had access to, uh, you know, equipment to test stuff and also the knowledge to, to see what was going on. And so started experimenting and uh, remind me to remind you <laughs> to, okay. to show you the very first Distressor prototype, which we oh, actually yes. have back here in the yes, building. Yes, yes. Um, and it, it was funny because it was really dirty, but really fun. <laughs> it, was, it was like the uh, Distort 3 times t 4. Really? Yeah. Wow, wow. This is Mary Ann's area where she, almost all the distressors are, are built. Does she do a specific part of yes. the distressor? Yes. What does she do? She does sometimes the front panels, the internal wiring, okay. uh, internal connectors. So this is power supply and the electronics that run the analog. Yes. Part of thing. This whole section over here is your audio. Uh -huh. um, we, we eliminate a bunch of components by putting in a microprocessor to control the logic and the display. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, we now have more space in the board, so uh, someday we may put out a version with some options, All more right. options. Very interesting. Yeah. So the digital side of things controls the analog side? Yes, That's digitally right. controlled analog. Would you call this design back in 96? revolutionary it was revolutionary because we combined really old circuit topology with digital control mm. and that opened up all kinds of doors the coolest thing about the design of the distressor is that it has that 70s thing with the knobs and everything yeah, yeah. but yet it's so like modern at the same time I like it a lot well there's people that would disagree with you <laughs> yeah. people think this is the ugliest piece of gear out what? there no, um, no, I don't and, think and so. In a way, it is. It's a great big print, you know, uh, sans serif print, 
uh, very plain, but you know what? Live guys love it because they can read it. Yeah, it's great big print. Um, Chris does our little freaks. This product is our hardest to make. This looks like one board. It's actually two boards back to back. Uh -huh. And this is the hardest product because of the knobs. There's, I think, 19 knobs on it, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. We use set screw knobs that can be adjusted. So when Chris gets done setting the frequencies and setting the boost gain knob, it's exact. Poor Chris goes crazy with the knobs. <laughs> He's gotten good now. I bet you can put the knobs on like an hour now, right? Hour and a half, something like that. He laughed. He didn't say yes or no. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that's a no. <laughs> um, let me show you our, our humorous burn-in room. Oh snap. Here we go again with the ovens. Uh, we burn in our stuff here, get it very, very hot. Oh, this is, uh, I need a shot of this. Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on. Look, look at this. Am I swimming in the stressors right now? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome, man. This is actually all B stock, but uh, a lot of the stuff, too, we use for shows, for show demos and stuff. Um, and this shelf, I don't know how much more weight this shelf can hold, so well, I can definitely, careful. I can definitely help you with that. Can you? You know, my like trunk it? in the car, you know, it, I can help you. I can assist you with that. I'm going to have to check his trunk before he leaves. <laughs> you remind you me? will have to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wanted to show you this. This is what really set us apart very early on. I'm going to grab, take a chance and grab a B-stock. I haven't done this in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do this anymore. This is a sweep input, uh -huh. uh, so it sweeps from minus 25 up to zero. Right. Okay. It takes a tone and sweeps it from 25 dB down up to a zero dB reference. And this is the output, the X axis. Uh -huh. As it compresses, you don't get the same thing out. It's basically a 45 degree line when you have no compression. I see. At the end there, that's a saturation. And then when you turn a compressor on, you get curves. Uh, I see, I so see. So now you get, this is the curve. This is showing me what the compressor is actually doing mm -hmm. just by listening to the input and the output and comparing the two? Exactly. Wow, that's interesting. Exactly. That's really cool. So moving forward, yes. we have talked about the future of the company and in that sense, the digital transition. I worked at Eventide, so I was always a big fan of digital technology. So now we're moving into plugins. Uh, we did a universal audio plugin six years ago now. I, think. Right. I didn't want to do the distressor at the time because we didn't know how it would impact our actual distressor sales. But the UA Fatso uh, was really a lot of fun, very educational for us. We actually started a new company this year, and basically we're going to be concentrating on digital technology at first, plugins and stuff. And in here is our digital development room, and this is where we test the plugins. This little cart here is when I do the real guts testing. I will wheel this cart out here um, and actually plug into the interface and see what the plugin is doing, often comparing it to hardware mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we're not leaving the magic behind. Mm -hmm. Comparing the digital versions to the analog units, do you think that in 2016 we're up there or where are we between the two? There are some things that you'll never do in digital. Mm. You'll just never do them. Um, as an example, uh, a distressor will pass a megahertz. Which in digital you can't. No, no, no there's no megahertz coming out of there unless it's clock noise. That being said, within the audio range, I think we're so close now. With a good user, it's indistinguishable. You can see a lot of my videos where I'm working only on the board, which is, you know, I'm like a pig in mud. I'm having, <laughs> it's my thing, you know? Yeah, you, you grew up on it. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other hand, you know, nowadays it's a lot of digital stuff, you know, so. I, either way, I really believe that it's the man, not the yeah, machine. It is the man. You know, so. All right, Dave, well, thank you so much for the amazing tour of the facility. Oh, it was my pleasure. Are you kidding? Of course, of course. Thank you so much. So I got strawberry, coconut, chocolate. What you want? What you like? I'll have at least one chocolate. Hit it. I'll try it. This one. I'll try this guy here. I think it's coconut, I think. I'm not completely sure. When, and I say when, there is going to be a movie about you, who's going to be the actor? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny one. <laughs> Brad Pitt would probably. Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> no, there won't be any movies.
You think? No. And I often share with the people my story, you know, coming from Venice to New York and all of this stuff. A lot of times people say, hey, they're going to they're gonna gonna be a movie. movie about this. So ever since then, I always think like, you know, there's a lot of people like yourself that are very successful in what they do. And I picture like, who's going to be your guy, you know? <laughs> Anybody in the music? All of Marin in music. Um, my one brother does play guitar. Um, but uh, everybody's very techno. My two brothers are engineers. Okay. Um, well, you got a bit of an engineer thing yourself too, man.